for joining us for the Walker Way, a legal podcast. I'm Travis Walker here with the law office of Travis R. Walker. We're so excited here to have Lucy McGuire, uh, a celebrity here on the Treasure Coast with uh, the Traveling Youth, uh, which is a great nonprofit I have the honor and privilege of uh, serving with. Uh, and, you know, having you here today and just wanting to, you know, get a little bit of information about what the Traveling Youth is about and, you know, how, how people can get more involved. Yeah, absolutely. So the Traveling Youth is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that helps underprivileged students take study abroad trips overseas to experience the world in a way that they may never otherwise have the opportunity. We are completely 100% volunteer ran. Thank you, Travis, <laughs> and the rest of my incredible board. Um, it, it has been an incredible experience to be a part of this, to start this in 2020 during the height of the pandemic, which I'm sure we can get more into, but it has been a, an incredible journey and we were able to send our first students overseas this summer. We sent seven students overseas to Czech Republic and Germany, and even they got to do a little weekend trip to um, Hungary. So really? yeah, there was some incredible stories that they came across with and um, these are just experiences that these students would otherwise never get to experience without the help and support of all of the incredible donors that we have here locally. No, definitely. And it's, it's been it's been quite an adventure already, uh, you know, both obviously getting the kids uh, off this last summer, but then growing the nonprofit as well. So like, yeah. so, but from like, just like a revenue standpoint or just like a growth standpoint, do you have like, like, has it doubled, tripled year over year? I mean, it started in what year, 2020? Yeah, it started in 2020. So we started during the pandemic right at the, at the end of the year. So November, 2020. Mm -hmm. And it was quite um, crazy how we even got started because I remember, you know, you were one of the people I reached out to. You're on my founding board. Yes. And I had come up with this idea actually in 2018 when I did my study abroad trip and it completely changed my life. And I was like, wow, like I know I was almost not able to go on that trip because I didn't come from a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And so when I went on the trip, I was like so taken aback by just the world and how incredible it was and how much I learned about myself, the world, my place in the world. And so um, when I had had that idea, I came back from Europe and I was broke. So I was like, well, can't happen in 2018. Sure. So it kind of went on the back burner for a bit. And then when um, the pandemic hit, <laughs> I had a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, as a lot of people did. And so when I was thinking, okay, like, well, what can I do with all this time? I am not really a total my thumb at home type of person. I had gone to the board, like I, I tried to formulate a board and I was like, well, let's see if we can get this idea off and going. Yeah. And every single person I asked, which I realize is a huge feat now, <laughs> every single person I asked said yes to be on that board and then we made it happen. And so we actually worked um, in the beginning with a program through IRSC um, called the Capstone Program. Okay. And so a lot of times people don't know what the Capstone Program is. Sure. But yeah, so what is the Capstone Program? Yeah. Yeah. So the Capstone Program helps. Um, so they have different programs set up in the final years of students when they're graduating from college. So uh, internship, right, is one that most people are familiar with. But another optional alternative to that is what's called the capstone. Okay. And so IRSC does this program and it is essentially bringing in businesses from um, different realms, whatever they might need. And if they have a problem, then we go. they go to try and solve that problem. They take that problem, put them into the capstone program, and they have students work on it all semester long for a grade. Okay. And so while the students are working on it for the grade, um, they pretty much come back with a, um, you know, hey, this is what we've done to solve the problem. And what, the problem I had was I had this idea, but I didn't have a business plan. I didn't know like exactly what was sure. going to come to sure. fruition. Yeah. And so uh, that we they started um, working on creating the business plan for the traveling youth and wow. what we were going to do. Okay. So it's like made for students by students and an alumni of the trap of, of uh, Indian River State College. Yeah. So it's really cool. That is. Yeah, and so then we just um, got started and we have been raising money, like ground roots money ever since that date in 2020. And it's just been, it's been nonstop. So we've definitely grown a lot um, going from, you know, in our first year, technically first full year, a couple thousand dollars we were bringing in. We raised enough, just so, enough to send one student, but there was the pandemic still going on and everything. So we had sure. all of those things going on. Yeah. Um, but then we kept year over year just making more money. Our events got more traction. As people learned about what we were and what we were doing, they were, 
gaining so much passion about it and spreading the word. And so it's kind of a snowball effect. Yeah, no, it's been, and it's huge. And, and, you know, I think obviously it's a huge benefit to the students, but then I think probably one of the, the questions you get asked often, and, and I know myself as well, is like, you know, we, we send these kids off, but then like, what is the value back to the community, right? Absolutely. And like you sending the kids off and then, you know, they come back and then they're able to, to provide insight, they're able to do all types of things. So, I mean, I guess talk a little bit about like that value that we really see that those kids bring back. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, we're just now seeing, starting to see how much these students really want to be back involved with the community, right? right? So when they go, I know a lot of times people think, oh, well, we're sending them away. Like, what, what are we just going to like let them leave away from our, <laughs> our community here? But really... If you've lived here your entire life, which right. I have, I, I, we're, I've how been here long for 26 been, years. 26 years? Yeah. Um, so I've lived here my entire life. That was the first thing I wanted to do, was to leave. I was like, get me out of here. And honestly, being able to leave mm -hmm. helps them want to come back and stay here and actually contribute back sure. now that they've learned. Because if you stay in the same place your entire life, you want you naturally want to break away from that typically. Right. So it's like if you never give them the opportunity to leave, then they're just gonna always have that want, like I wanna leave here. Right. So it gives them that first step. And then when now when they're coming back, like a lot of these students are business majors, mm. um, they have things that they want to accomplish in their life. True. And so now they're coming back and they're like, wow, okay, I can do so much more than I thought I could do before because now these possibilities have been opened up to them. They've met other people from around the world. They've learned more about themselves. Maybe a direction for them has shifted. I know a couple of the students, they thought about a couple of ways that like, Oh, one of them, she learned about what I was doing with marketing and now she wants to do marketing oh, and wow. she's learning about marketing and she has volunteered her time back to the organization, started learning about social media. To traveling you. To the traveling oh, you. That's great. Yeah. yeah. And started learning about social media and now she's learning the back end like how to do social media and like she's amazing oh really and so now i'm like i want to hire her like in my own business <laughs> sure um and i'm like okay i gotta figure out how to hire her because now she's she's even created this initiative to be able to learn a new skill yeah. and a lot of them want to get involved in different things like sure. they're, they're just they're asking like oh can you get me connected in this realm and they're looking for those connections and we want to help bridge those connections through the traveling youth as well. Nice. So we want to be able to eventually be like, hey, if you're an accounting firm, right, and you want to sponsor a student to go, we will do our best to match you up with a student who is in the accounting realm. Okay. And then now you're investing in a student who's wanting to learn accounting. And then now when they come back, we can be like, hey, you know that person who who sponsored you, now we can hopefully get you in with a job with them. Wow. Right? Oh, that's great. It would be a huge full circle. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody adds value to everything else and everything. And yeah. that's that's fantastic. So, I mean, so obviously the first full year was 2021. And then the, the fundraising of 2021 and then 2022 basically allowed for seven students to go this past summer, right? So, no. Because the, um, so 2021, we had the pandemic, right? It Correct. was still going on. And we had raised enough money to be able to send one student mm -hmm. to go overseas in 2021. Pandemic hit. We were like, okay, that's fine. Or it was still hitting. I mean, it was still going on. <laughs> it was, Full on. We, we all expected the pandemic to last a few weeks yeah. and we all got shocked. Is but it, that's okay. It, yes. we're, we're here now. We're, we're past it. Yeah. Um, so we, um, then in 2020, Two, we had sent, we had raised enough money to send students, um, four students. And so what had happened was the war in Ukraine had broken out. Mm, yes. Yeah. So then because of the war in U Ukraine breaking out, we were like, the, the college that we were partnering with in IRSC, they weren't able to do, they were like, we're not doing the trip over to Europe. Right. So it was, it was a very conservative decision and we understood it and we just kind of had to go with the flow. Mm -hmm. um, when this year came around, um, IRSC still decided that they weren't going to do the study abroad trip. So we actually took the program underneath our own wing mm -hmm. and decided that we were going to send them underneath our organization. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's where we're at now. So, so if, if I mean, help me with the math though. So the first year you're able to do one, mm -hmm. the second year you're able to do four, this year you're able to do seven. So mm -hmm. like you're really, I mean, exponentially growing. I mean, I mean, you more than triple, quadruple the first time and then almost double the second year. So yeah. that's a lot of growth. Absolutely. And so it's a, and a testament to your hard work and really kind of just hustling and everything. Because you don't, and obviously you don't just do this because you really don't get paid to do this. I don't get paid to do this. <laughs> but this no. just comes from your heart. But I mean, so yeah. what, is your, what is your real job? What do you, I mean, 
mean, what do you, what is your real gig on yeah. a day-to-day -day basis? So my real gig where I make money, I do social media coaching and management. Okay. So I started that in the early 20, January 2022. Awesome. And so I've been just helping businesses, coaching businesses, and coaching individuals on how to be more impactful on social media. Yeah. And those skills very much helped me translate into the traveling youth as well and getting people involved with that. But um, yeah, it's been it's been great to be able to be my own boss, so that I can give a lot more time and energy to my nonprofit because I'm the one calling the shots. Really I can shots. be like, I need to spend this day on the traveling youth, and that's okay. Yeah, no, I mean, and, and, and you must be a, spend a considerable amount of hours, especially leading up to events. And then we have an event, I think, this Friday. Yes. Uh, it's November the third, yeah. the uh, holiday soiree, which is one of what three events in the year? Yep, we have three events. We have the Family Fun Exploration Day in the spring. We have the holiday soiree in the early um, holiday season, so beginning of November. And then we have our holiday pie drive throughout the rest of the year. Nice. Um, and that is a huge, a huge event because people love our pie. And the, in the holidays where I actually kicks off the holiday pie drive. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that is like the first day you're able to order your pies. That's the first time people are able to, you know, get get their orders in because people are like asking and begging for it all year round. Sure, sure. Because <laughs> they're really good. Yeah, they're no, I've heard, heard <laughs> it, all, all great things about the pies and everything. And then, so it's, it's November 3rd, it's at the, the Flagler Center? Yeah, the Stewart. Flagler of Stewart, okay. yeah, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And is it tickets at the door? Is it like, you know, do people just, do they pay? How would, how would somebody want to, if they wanted to go? Yeah, so if you'd like to go to the holiday soiree, you can go to thetravelingyouth.org and then we have all of our upcoming events right there. You're able to click into the holiday soiree and you can see the tickets that are available right there and you can purchase right there. That's great. And then so like last year I know it was a big hit. I mean and so are you expecting like a, a bigger celebration this time? Yeah absolutely. It was one we were shocked by how many people came out last year and it was incredible. We had a great time. Over a hundred people came last year and we expect the same if not more this year. That's so yeah, we're, we're ramping up for a really good time on the third. No, that's great. And, and because it's at the beginning of the, the season, it's, you know, like people don't have that fatigue and there's not a whole lot of conflicts and that type of thing. And it's just a, a great a great opportunity to get out. Absolutely. Yeah, because the holiday season gets so crazy and we know how involved our local community is. I mean, you're involved in a lot of other things as well. Sure. Um, and I know I am. So when the holiday season comes, people are like, I have too many parties. <laughs> so we hit them early and we're like, okay, like let's kick off the holiday season we've kind of made our mark with that mm -hmm. um, before any other holiday seasons events come into play and then it's a great way to give back we have live auction items we have open bar we have you know DJ and karaoke we've got heavy appetizers we've got so many things for people to enjoy at the event and it's a great fun way to raise money for a really really great cause oh it's a huge cause and, I, and that's why it's near and dear to my heart and so proud to be a founding member of it because you know there's you're just really able to kind of you can literally give people an education by you know bringing them overseas and everything and then you know we sent seven last you know, this past year but mm -hmm. i mean are we, are we shooting for like 14 this next year or what so, do you think it would be amazing to send like 15 students next year yeah. um we are hoping we're because we were raising money for so long over the past three years um we know that that was why we were able to send so many students this year so we're trying to make manageable goals <laughs> we're, we're hoping to be able to send 10 students next year um and really the holiday soiree and the holiday pie drive are a huge benefit like they're the they're how we do with those are how many students we're going to be able to send right so the more money we raise in the next couple of months the more students we can send next year. And then it's really, and it's, is it primarily like needs-based, merit-based? I mean, the the criteria, because I know, you know, gosh, you tell tell me I got a free trip coming to the Czech Republic or something like that. You know, there's, I mean, if they know about it and, and there there's going to be a huge number of applications. So, you know, walk us through a little bit about how they, they determine who's, you know, who we're, who's going to be on the, uh, the trip. Yeah, absolutely. So on the trip, we have an application process, which is going to be opening up at the beginning of November this okay. year. So okay. it's coming, um, up, coming up in a week. Coming up in a yeah. week. Yes. Um, so that is 
going to be available on our website. And then when people apply for it, um, we have a committee, a subcommittee that goes through the, all the applications. We have a video application portion yep. um, to it. So they do have to fill out all the preliminary questions. And then once they um, do that, they submit that, then they have to submit a video interview with specific questions that we ask them. Okay. After that, they're going to be in, invited to a second interview process in person okay. um, with the same committee. And then we're going to be, you know, getting a feel for them, making sure that every like that they are qualified and what we're trying to send and everything like that. So we go through that whole process with them asking them pointed questions to make sure that they are going to be representatives for our organization, but mm. also that they understand and, and value this trip and what we're trying to provide here. Sure. Um, so they go through this kind of process, rigorous process in a sense, <laughs> to make sure that they um, are going to be good candidates. Yep. And it is need-based. So we want to make sure that these are students who would otherwise never have the opportunity to go. Sure. Um, we want to make sure that they are in need of the money, that they're not, you know, they don't have all that money just waiting along the side. Like, yeah. and, you know, it's hard too because people will, anybody will apply for a scholarship sometimes. So we do have to like sift through those and make sure that yeah. we're getting the right at need students on the trip. Yeah. And so we ask a bunch of questions to make sure that we are getting through that. And then we, um, the subcommittee is the one who, com who decides who is going on that. And that is completely dependent on, um, on how much money we've raised, so sure. how many students we're sending. And we're also, this year, opening it up to um, trade students as well. Okay. So if students are studying for trade, like um, AC or any of those other, t any type of programming or that's certificate great. program, they can actually apply for the scholarship. That's awesome. No, yeah. I, that's that's really broadening everything. And, and as the traveling youth continues to grow, it provides more and more opportunities for us to do stuff. So. Absolutely. And we just hope to keep growing. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, and that's, that's, a, that's a great part about it and everything. And I mean, so do you have like a, a like a five year goal or a ten year goal for the the traveling youth? Or oh, it is. Um, we've done so much growth in just a short period of time. It's kind of a, a crazy to believe like how much we've grown in just a short period of time. So I think right now we do have goals as a board. We come together and we, you know, as you know, we we talk about our goals for the upcoming years. Um, and I think that. For us, our goal is to just to be able to send as many students as possible that our community will, you know, help us support in. Sure. We're going to start uh, applying for grants next year. We've, we've grown our board to include people who are able to help with the grant process and starting to build out those pieces of our organization mm -hmm. to make sure that we are ready to expand as well. We would love to continue growing over the state of Florida, sending students and from all over the state, um, and then you know, eventually in other states too. So I mean, we. We want to continue growing it beyond Florida as well so we can impact as many people as yeah. possible. But, you know, we got to start small. We're here. We're here in the Treasure Coast. <laughs> it's it's working, but it's working, and it's, and it's a unique concept because there's a lot of great nonprofits out there, and, you know, and they, they all have their own thing and everything. But this one's very unique, and that's why I love it so much. So, I mean, right now, are, are the students – exclusively coming from IRSC or are they coming from other places too? So last year they were, ex well technically this year I should say, I shouldn't say last year because 2023 they left, they won in the summer of yes. 2023. Yes. So um, this past year they did, um, g they were all from IRSC. So mm -hmm. like I said, our application process is going to be opened up to other students as well. And um, as you mentioned, there are so many incredible local nonprofits. What I've realized is a lot of those nonprofits actually service up until 18. Mm, so, yes, and good. then, yeah, like, which is great. And I mean, it's totally what we need for our youth. And sometimes people see the traveling youth and they think we're servicing younger people, but sure. we're servicing people from 18 to 25, mm. which is a range that I always say, like, people think, oh, well, you know, you're an adult at 18, but we all know that you're not an nothing, adult nothing at 18. Nothing magically happens at 18, right? <laughs> nothing magically yes. happens at 18. It's, it's like, it's click everything. Oh, we, we, the yes. world makes sense. You, yeah, exactly. you got your life together. <laughs> like, you're like, you're still trying to figure it out. You're mid-20s. You're like, what's going on? Right. So we think we're really providing a great service for, hey, you, you just turned into an adult now. Now experience the world a little bit, learn about yourselves, see what you can contribute back to society. And that's who we are trying to target this year. So this year we, by branching it out to those um, industries of trade or whatever it might be, we wanna make sure that we are providing it to people who are going to be able to bring that back to our community. So are you, are you so in, with the trades and everything, are you creating like exclusive spots for them or is it more of just like a, hey, we're going to take the best, you know, the, the most needed, most needy, most uh, merit, you know, meritorious, those type of applicants as opposed to like creating 
exclusive spots for them or something. So right now, I think we're just going to go, we're just basing it off of, because it's our first year bringing in the trade um, aspects, we're going to be just doing it based off of the best need. So I mean, and you know, we just wanted to make sure that those who are in the trades get that opportunity because sometimes they are the ones that are in need because they can't afford to go to college. That's true. Or they, could, they couldn't get FAFSA or they couldn't get um, scholarships or whatever it might be. There's so many different need levels that we calculate when we are actually um, taking in the application. So those are all questions we ask. So that's that's great. And then, so it, it, so it was exclusively IRSC, but now we've kind of broadened it out it's a little bit. Broadened. And as you're, you're hearing, and obviously there's more and more, you know, people hearing about what we're doing and everything. So like you, you sent seven last time. How, how many applicants did you have last time? Do you remember? Um, off the top of my head, we had um, probably close to like 20 or 30, 20. Okay. Um, but we want more. So sure. like we do, like please spread the word. We want to have more people being applying for the US scholarship so that we can get the word out there. We're, we're making efforts this year to make sure that we launch it sooner. Yeah. That's why we're launching at the beginning of November, right before our holiday soiree, so that we can, at the holiday soiree, be like, our applications are now open. So nice. please... Apply. Please, apply. <laughs> Please go for it. So, and then when yeah. does the application period end? So it'll end January first, twenty twenty-four. Okay, so they have a good full, good two months. I mean, and then you're gonna and the students, especially the IRSC, they'll probably have at least two weeks, the last two weeks of December, because they'll have their their mm -hmm. exams and everything. They'll have plenty of time to get their applications in and everything. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's a good timing for it. So we definitely implore them to to do so because I mean, the, the more that's there, the better the better the crop that's there. Because you were able to actually go uh, attend the last trip uh, this past summer, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. I was. I paid my way to go so that I could see the first trip, the inaugural trip happen, and it was absolutely incredible to see. I mean, especially because it was the same trip that I did in 2018, mm -hmm. that, like, it was really cool to see it from, like, an outside perspective, like seeing the students in my, what my place was five years ago. Sure crazy to see but yeah I got to go and I got to experience it and help the students you know get to class make sure everything was good make sure that they had um, you know uh, the cultural experiences that they need to get to we went to the opera we went to um, different cities in Germany to make sure that they um, were we were I was helping coordinate along the way as well to make sure that we had you know transportation but also that the students um, were getting the educational portion of it too because this is a study abroad trip that is um, coordinated we are partnered with CZU over in Czech Republic CZU. Okay. so that is um, Czech University of Life Sciences okay so we're partnered with them over there and they get a certificate program through that college and then we are um, also just making sure it's a complete completely educational experience for them. They have some free time to be able to experience, you know, their own their own stuff, but we want to make sure that it is education first. Speaking of trains, like, so I guess you, do they use your rail or something like that? Or like, how do they, you know, I mean, and are they all together when they're, they, I mean, do they, you know, do they travel around together as a group or do they kind of have the freedom to travel separately? So it's both. Most of the time it is um, a situation where we are all traveling as a group together. So mm -hmm. if we're going from like city to city, so when we went to Germany, we went to Berlin, we went to Dresden, we went to Munich, wow. and um, we took buses a lot of the times um, on that specific one just because it was cheaper sure. than the trains or it just made more sense time wise just depends on where where it was um, but we had that experience they there were situations where they took trains as well mm. certain certain transportation with e Urail um, that is a great opportunity to utilize the trains too but because we stay at Czech in Czech Republic um, in Prague they, they get a transportation pass for the city of Prague for oh, the month. Okay. And so they're able to take the trains, trams, buses, everything. They get the students at Czech, in the, um, the students at CZU actually help like guide them through the public transportation. Really? And this is actually a huge thing for students, especially here it, along the Treasure Coast, because we don't have public transport. No, nothing. <laughs> so we're like, people are like, what's a bus? Like, yes. <laughs> what's a train? Yes. Like, other than the trains that they see going through the city, but they're not like used to passenger trains. So when they go over there, they have to learn the public transportation system, mm -hmm. and it's quite a shock to them, too, because they have to like figure out when things are coming and going and how and what, what platform to be on, and those are just things that we're not used to in our small town here. Not so. used to it all. So it's a, it's a, just even the transportation experience is just an educational experience. Absolutely, so, yeah. Which is yeah. fantastic. And they get to meet students from all over the world, too. Oh, really? Because so. not, not, obviously that's kind of like a congregation of like from across the world of other study, study abroad students. Yeah. So you're just not just experiencing the Czech Republic and students 
students from the Czech Republic, but you might be experiencing people from China or something along those lines. Yeah, so they actually had um, two different other, or there was two other study abroad programs that were there at the same time that they were there. So okay. there was the Korean students wow. and um, the Portuguese. Wow. So yeah, they got to meet and like the Korean students had a huge group. They had like over 30 people in their group. Really? Yeah. So they actually had a couple of trips, um, a couple of excursions that they went on with those students as well. And some with the Portuguese, they had um, different activities. The college does a really great job of getting them connected with other students and making sure that they feel comfortable going on campus and they can, you know, there's the student um, area in the campus that they're able to go and mingle with other students and just, and they're obviously meeting Czech students too. So, of course, you of know, course. because they're in Czech Republic. Yeah, no, and, and then obviously that just creates a, a huge opportunity for just understanding other cultures and learning new yeah. languages and, you know, just really kind of getting to the depths of it and everything. So I think it's a huge testament to the program and everything. And obviously they're getting college credit while they're there too, right? So, mm -hmm. so they're getting um, a certificate program because we had to go through, um, cause IRSC wasn't offering the program themselves. Yeah. We had, and we had to take it underneath our own wing. We had to make it where it was, Hey, we're, we're going through CZU. That's all they're getting classes. They're going to class um, with the different professors learning about different topics. Some of them are even comparable comparative topics between the US and Czech Republic so that they like they had a tax class where they oh. were talking about like the tax differences and everything which was really interesting actually I'm some sure. of the students actually enjoyed it <laughs> like I know taxes doesn't sound fun but they were like asking questions and super engaged so that was cool um, but yeah they they get a certificate from the university that they have been you know completed the study abroad program okay. so and a lot of times you know with a college credit College credits, like if we were getting it directly from CZU, like it wouldn't transfer a lot sure. of times to different colleges anyway. So, yeah. you know, when we're giving, this is an experience for them and it is an educational piece, but it is something that they're going to be able to take with them with throughout the rest of their life. Absolutely. And then do you, do you have any ideas where the 2024 trip might be or... So we're still working on a couple of ideas. It's definitely going to be to Czech Republic, and then we always go to Czech Republic for three weeks. It's a month-long program, okay. and then we go we go somewhere else for um, that week. So we're talking about a couple places. There's been mention of Dubai. Oh, there's wow. been mention of Belgium. So there's been a couple of options being talked about. Um, we're, we're, we have connections in certain places, so we're just formulating with those connections and making sure that wherever we take them, that it's just going to make sense for the program. Wow. So those people who are thinking about applying, not only may you find yourself in the Czech Republic for three weeks, but you might actually find yourself in Dubai, in the UAE Maybe. as well. <laughs> so you never you never can tell. So it's, it's, it's a great opportunity. So definitely implore people to, to explore that because, yeah, I mean, it's obviously just a, an educational opportunity, a cultural opportunity. You learn lots of great people. Yeah. You grow up pretty quick because I'm sure, like, you know, some of the students are maybe 18 and some of them are a little bit older, but, like, they still don't necessarily have – some of them have maybe – and left the state of Florida or even maybe the, the Treasure Coast. Yeah, and those are questions we ask too because we want to make sure, like, have you ever left the state of Florida? And a lot of them haven't. That's wild. And, and, that, and that's what's crazy too is that sometimes people have never left their city, their state, the country, and there's so much to accept. Like, we live in a huge world. Like, yeah. you don't realize how big it is or how small you are until you actually go to experience some of these places. Right. Um, have you been to Dubai? I've not been to Dubai. I've been to Belgium, and I've oh. been to uh, a number of places in Europe, but I haven't been to Dubai. That's on the list. Oh. I mean, there's all kinds of conferences and too. stuff like that. So, <laughs> so it might, it might, it may, it may have to pay my own way next time, and like you know, go to the Czech Republic and everything else like that. Well, that'd be a great time. Yeah, um, it is. but yeah, cool. it's uh, always looking to, to broaden horizons and everything. I mean, I've been to all seven continents, which has been great. But it's like you know, you know, tr getting even further deeper into it is is huge. And so yeah, I'm 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 totally on board with that. So the adventure never ends. It never once you start, once you start traveling, you don't stop. It's, yeah. it's, it's just amazing. And some of the students too have talked about like now they never thought that they could travel before. Like it was not even, they didn't even realize how easy it could be. Mm -hmm. So now they're like talking like, Oh, you know, I want to, I want to be able to like, you know, do something else. Like, how can I do this? And they're asking for guidance, like, so that they can either just take like maybe a weekend trip or something. It don't have to be like a, a month long trip, but they're just like, tr now they're starting to reshape like how they can actually interact with the world because they really didn't think it was possible before. No, it's true. I mean, once yeah. you break down that door and they're like, wow, I really can go outside the country. I really can experience these other cultures. And then they're probably looking on Google flights or kayak or whatever and like, 
wow, I can go over to London for a few hundred bucks or something like that. Yeah. You know, why, let's just go. You yeah. Know? And, no, and exactly. he broke that, that seal, which is, which is huge. Yeah. Because then like you, they, they now take the initiative to, to do that. So I, I think it's great on some of Yeah, ways, so. absolutely. We're so excited. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah, no, excited as well. So, um, you know, definitely people, you know, check it out November 3rd at Flagler Center. You know, it's going to be a great event. Over 100 people. Open bar. I mean, you can't, you know, really. I mean, and what is the what is the admission price? Uh, the, it is only $75. Includes open bar. Sponsored by Travis R. Walker. Thank you. Law. <laughs> <laughs> so you can thank Travis for the open bar there. Yeah. And um, we have heavy appetizers there. Again, live auction items. We're going to have regular raffle prizes. We have... Um, a DJ, karaoke, a dance floor. It's going to be such a great time. And come dressed in your best holiday attire, too. Yeah. And then, I mean, Blue there's Christmas. probably, there's pictures on the on the Facebook page or Instagram from last year or something oh, like that. Yeah. So, like, yeah, it looked like a great, great, great time. I wasn't able to make it. I'm definitely planning on making it this time. <laughs> but so if you if you are questioning, like, what should I wear or what should I do or whatever, like, you know, check out the Facebook page for the Traveling Youth or the Instagram You'll see the event pictures from last time. Yeah, so. absolutely. It's 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 a holiday attire, holiday cocktail attire. So, come in your best holiday gear. I'll be in blue. It's like blue Christmas theme is the whole event. Yeah, but you don't have to come in blue if you don't want to. That's just you know just, my favorite color. Our you might see a lot of blue though. You blend You'll in well. It. Yeah, exactly. If you want to blend in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but any Christmas will do. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. So excited, looking forward to it, and uh, and then also the the spring event and everything. And people should just continue to stay plugged in and. And find ways that they can be actively involved. I mean, we're also looking for volunteers and and help. Always. You know, there's always there's always something. I mean, I know that putting on the soiree was was a huge you know it's a huge thing a lift of and of itself. So there you know you can contribute, you can attend, you can volunteer, you can find lots of different ways of getting involved. Absolutely. And if you can't make it to the event this Friday, then there's still opportunities. You can always donate on our website at thetravelingyouth.org. And we are so appreciative of all the support. I mean, every dollar helps us to really make this um, a reality for these students. So we're just so, I, so excited. And my, my heart's into it, too. So thank you so much, thank Lucy, you. for taking the time to meet with us to hear, uh, here at the, uh, the, at the podcast and you know, figuring out everything we can do to help spread the word for the traveling youth. So. Thank you. And I'm excited to see the rest of this podcast. <laughs> thank you for ma making me the inaugural guest. We're, we're, we're honored <laughs> that you would be here. So thank, thank you so you. much. Thanks. It's good to see you. <laughs>